All right, call the order at 636. And did, did everyone get a chance to review the minutes from last time? Yes. I wasn't at the last meeting, so I can't vote. No, but you re reviewed them, right? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, of course. All right, so. Do I make, I can't remember, do you make the motion? I make the motion, who makes the motion to approve? That's true, Who, I can't remember, it's anybody? Anybody, okay. Motion to approve last meeting of minutes. Second. Second. Everybody? Yes. Aye. Aye. Aye, stay. Mm -hmm. All right. So first on the agenda, after that I have uh, the crosswalks and the asphalt art. So, um, and then I also added, I found that you gave me the idea for Amesbury and what they did, so I put that in there also. So, mm -hmm. do you want to add to that at all? Not really. I did notice that you guys talked about last time doing the basketball court at the Dino Park, doing a mural there. Yeah. And I feel like that might be a more, like, a more digestible first step to this because you don't have to worry about the safety, the reflectiveness, that, that which is going to take a little bit more time, but might get people excited about the public art portion yeah. a little bit earlier, and you don't have to worry about stopping traffic. Um, I know that the... <coughs> Is it called the extended learning at yes. the high school? Um, they have a group of students ready to go who want to work with an artist to do it. So I think that we really could like do it if Parks and Rec would let us paint it. <laughs> but um, that's I think more doable. And then that can start a conversation and maybe get more people on board with the crosswalks, which I think is a little bit of a longer, like harder sell because it has to. You got to deal with safety. You got to deal with stopping traffic. You got to deal, which I think we should 100% do. Yeah. But I think maybe get a little momentum going first. Okay. So Thoughts? I was able to connect with Rose Bryant today. She's all in for our front street. She said being as involved as we want or need them to be, at least you know, overseeing one of the crosswalks closest to her, but she said she'd help out with um, other folks in the neighborhood getting involved in sponsorship, whatever we need. Um, I also talked with some of the artists at Station Studios, and they're all in as well. So I think the art side of it, I think, is the least of our worries and <laughs> figuring out the logistics and, um, you know, everybody I've talked to Everyone just seems to come back to how do you do it? I mean, yeah. how do you close half the road, do one at a time, and then move to another location and come back and do the other half? You do it all at once, like make yeah. a big festival, like an arts festival, and then you close it off for like that purpose, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Julie, do you know what yeah, the whole scope of what we're talking about? Okay. Yeah, the, the but, so we were looking at, it's, I think it's four. It's basically the one on front, like right in front of Roses, mm -hmm. the one leading into where Emma Chocolate and the old fish market is, the one on Railroad Ave, and then the one right around the dinosaur park, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the part, yeah. Yeah, that's a good stretch because there is a sort of uh, go around even down Lincoln Street and Main Street when you get close to, well, any of those on that side of the railroad. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I um, struck me when I was looking at it is, um, do we want to uh, have the artist just have free reign, or are they going to submit a design? No, we definitely want to have mm -hmm. have a template. You know, when it goes before the select board and everybody else, like have a slide of this is what the image is going to be, and and I think the artists are going to for that as well. And so you have a call for artists to come up with a design and then invite, you know, the high school kids and whoever. Well, I think that's what we kind of went round and round with it as far as wanting to get as many people involved as possible, but also wanting it to be have realistic <laughs> to yeah. have design to get it done. So that's why we were thinking maybe going to different groups, you know, having our front street kind of oversee mm -hmm. one project, have SST oversee one, have the, you know. Yeah, because it's kind of ownership to. of that area of town, too. Right. It's kind of yeah. like the arts yeah. district in a way. So then if the studios and art at front street, if they kind of have their own, then it, I don't think it feels like, oh, you didn't call to all artists. It's like, right. no, we're kind of, this is our side of town. Reflection of the, over here. Yeah, the people yeah. are there, yeah. <clears throat> Didn't they do the 
released a new report. They just did it in Amesbury like two or three years ago. Maybe somebody talk to them and see how they put the whole thing together. logistics part of it like how did you stop traffic and who did you okay. I also saw in one of the attachments was the chalk chalking instead of mm -hmm. painting more on the sidewalk bar thing um, and if that's part of your long range uh, look at public art like a like a chalk festival kind of thing yeah was part of what Amesbury did where they um, one of their initiatives, their public art initiatives, was to have like certain parts of wherever we designate as like different artists would come out and do chalk on the ground instead. So it'd be temporary. Right, right. So, so yeah. just stay as long as they're there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's good too. Some of the images are great. They, <laughs> they can do a lot of uh, painting, painterly chalk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, there was a guy in Boston that used to do like <laughs> the Mona Lisa and everything out in Chalk. You know? Wow. So, yeah, he yeah. did these amazing things. Mm -hmm. And then it got washed away. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's performance art. It's right. <laughs> Lives on Instagram. You need to find some of the people that do the graffiti on the trains. They're really good. <laughs> so you can go back. They're very talented. <laughs> want to get back to the basketball park and talk about that a little bit more to see if that's something that we would want to do first or what or at least have the, or maybe have the students do that part yeah. so then they you know are a little bit more contained <laughs> yeah I, I mean that's something that Greg and I have been talking about three four years ago and we were pre-COVID ready to jump on it and then it just yeah. got put on the back burner so I don't think that's going to take too much prep I mean I think it there needs to be some sort of prep paint that goes over it, that's some sort of asphalt paint that allows you then to paint over it. It's almost like, like, a, a, like a primer yeah. kind of thing. Um, to mimic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, the pool paint. <laughs> if we have any extra. <laughs> this is expensive pool paint. Oh, okay. <laughs> we were talking about last night at select board meeting. Oh, OK. Yeah. <laughs> we have to paint the pool, so. Okay. I'll be doing that with our foreman and new <laughs> laborer. And, and then we can just use it for the crosswalks and for the murals. Yeah. And yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's white. It's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. almost at zero. That's the primer. <laughs> Is that um, like an epoxy paint or something? I, yeah, I'm it's not exactly paint. sure, probably. I just saw epoxy paint smells like really, really, really bad. So I was like, you bunch of kids out there with well, epoxy paint. I was actually joking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it would be like public works that would paint it first to, once it got approved, and then the measurements would be taken, and then the students could come back with a design, maybe? Yeah, the students, their only requirement is that they need a professional artist to work with, to mm -hmm. be a, a mentor and help them just kind of with brainstorming and process and materials and stuff like that, since it's part of like a extended learning opportunity. Okay. Um, but they have an ELO teacher um, who would help coordinate all of that. His only job is to like be an e to, to, to work with them on that. And um, according to Dan, they're ready to they're they're good to go and they're looking for an opportunity. So yeah, I don't want to uh, uh, volunteer with public works only because we're so tight with personnel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just think in the same thing. So it might be a thing where yeah. um, the first effort. And I like the idea of starting small like that to mm -hmm. see how the coordination works. Um, but starting with how you prep the canvas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe they reach out to Public Works and say, hey, what do we do? You know, like they, we can definitely do that. If you, it's more, do you guys have suggestions for artists that they could work with or reach out to? Yeah, I mean, we, between our Front Street, PEA, Station Studios, team folks, I mean, I, Right. I think we can put some feelers out. And so I'll, put find them, I'll, I'll send Adam Krauss, who's the, the teacher for it, your way, and maybe we can just start there. Yeah, well, that's okay. great. And I do assume you guys, you know, Greg, you guys are fine with like wanting to do that? Or? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sure we're fine. I'm just wondering, is this something that we want to go to the select board and kind of ask for their permission as well? Because it's changing. Yeah, yeah, we're just because it is a town property. Yeah. So, um, and just to you know, make it more public and you 
there's lots of reasons to do it, but yeah, because it is town property, and right. just want to be sure it's done right. Yeah, so I, moving forward, I'm not sure if we, if this committee should make a motion or a recommendation to the Parks and Rec Department, and we would maybe discuss it with the Rec Advisory Board. I don't want to slow things down, but. There's well, that's where yeah. it came, my husband's on the Rec Advisory yeah. Board, and I think that's where it came from. He wanted to bring it up there, but I think our meeting was for him. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know what the, yeah, what the that's next slide would be. Bring it up there first. Because our the next select board meeting is in two weeks. I don't know when does the. We, When's his meeting? we usually meet the last or the fourth Tuesday of each month, but I haven't seen anything about next Tuesday, so I don't know if we are meeting or not. So it would be good if we did, because then that would it, it would be right best if so. we did. But I, I think that you can go ahead and talk amongst your department. Yeah. Um, okay. If if you can't, if that meeting doesn't not get held. Right. Yeah. I mean, does it maybe make sense to? Bring the entire concept to the select board just to sort of get the bigger picture out there mm -hmm. in the public domain and then sort of ask for permission to start with the, just the dinosaur park, basketball, asphalt, mural. Yeah, as far as, yeah, like, to, yeah. So select board first and then parks and rec? Well, parks well, I and mean, rec and all together? Well, at the same I mean, time. parks and rec can sign off on this without the advisory committee, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a I, yeah. advisory committee. So. Yeah. 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 yeah, I believe so. I'll right. just double check um, with Greg on that. But. The, the only reason I would recommend if they're meeting next week to discuss it is just to have that much more visibility, uh, mm -hmm. even though your meetings aren't recorded, right? But to have... Um, I want to say they were. Our last one, we were, we've been in the Novak room. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, that starts the conversation already. Um, and then come to the select board and talk about we want to paint your public space. And, right. And, and uh, the example that you have here from the Amesbury, or which one did the. Yeah, yeah Amesbury. Yeah, Amesbury. Yeah. Is it a close one? And just to be ready with the uh, answers to the question that I've been asking about how, how it would play out with the, the design. And, <laughs> right. So with that one, would we want to have the students submit to, to who, to us, what their design idea is, so it's not like a carte blanche paint, whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. think so. You know, or I'm just wondering work who with whoever the, the, the sort of mentor ends yeah. up being, and then come to us, and then we bring it to the select board. So we do want to make this move as quickly as possible before school gets on. <laughs> well, does, um, do any of your art teachers like Jen or Bree or um, the James over there, do they know, are they going to be helping connect the students? Are they involved at all? No. no. Okay. Because, hmm. yeah, it would be great to be like, okay, here's the artist that you're going to work with, and then y'all come up with, like, your little plan, your proposal, and the art idea, and then they can present that to us, or one of them can come. I mean, they could be working on that now. You know, like, yeah. we don't need to wait for us to get everything rolling because if yeah. it didn't work, it doesn't it doesn't harm them right. learning that process. Yeah. yeah. And then we could try and make it a little bit speedier because you're right, the time is of the essence when it comes to the students because we right. only have a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, the only thing we talked about in the past, like I brought up before, was just like maybe incorporating into whatever the mural is, like a tic-tac-toe board, and maybe some like yeah, four squares square. or something, so that it's a fun mural, but there's actually interactive um, images yeah. that are there. That would be great. sure how much that court gets used for basketball but if there was a way to keep some of those lines yeah. mm -hmm. I think just trying to think of the outside here like you know the family there's a lot of families that live down there yeah. as far as the basketball key I don't even think there's a basketball key there really 
right now. No, no, no. Oh, I haven't been down there. there. Hasn't no, been no. I've never seen anyone. Okay, that's good. Cool. It's pretty much where the community big wheels. I see. Yeah. <laughs> so there's no lines. There. Okay, there that was no my only concern. I, I mean, we line. could make that part of it too. Certainly not regulation. Yeah, I mean, make that part of it and then put tic tac toe and yeah. other stuff inside. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we can do a golden rectangle kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, for you and for like the ELO for school, they could, I guess, yeah, we could say to like you could go back. Do you want me to email Adam or you got it? Or do you want me to, since I'm already teaching and yeah. I can say here's some info? And, yeah, that'd oh, be great. I will do that. Well cut out as many. I'm all for just go direct. <laughs> Streamline. Okay. Yeah. else with that the crosswalks are the park you know you'll reach out to yellow i'll reach out to amesbury are you, i don't remember where the rack ended are you going to do it are you going to talk to talk to the select board yeah yeah i'm going to talk with greg and um we'll see if we if we have a rec advisory board meeting next week we'll definitely bring it up um if not i'm going to ask him how he wants to move forward with it i think just going to the select board and asking them for permission for that um, is definitely a good start. Um, okay. Thank you. Okay, next I have chairs at the town hall. Chairs, chairs, chairs. Are we wondering what the status is? I can't remember. I know we talked about it, but a lot has gone. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know if Julie has anything. I mean, we sent an email to Greg and I think Deco and Greg just responded and said, you know, there's been some dialogue, but no real second yeah. step on the whole thing. No, that's, that's okay. the status of the, um, all that's, all, all the discussion is, is we have to buy the chairs and then sell the other, other ones. ones yeah. mm -hmm. um, I don't know if maybe we can do that piecemeal, it probably doesn't make sense, but um, just to get the, the wooden ones out of the way. Right. Um, and then I, I wanted to ask you if you've been looking at chairs, if you have a particular kind that you're, uh, it would help to you still want discussion to, along. The lifetime ones that we talked about a few months ago, are those still the ones that y'all are considering buying? I believe so. Are those yeah, the I mean, ones that Greg is keep going back yeah, to? Um, Greg's definitely the one who's kind of <laughs> yeah. done the research. Yeah. And, right. Yeah. What, what's your thought on how would you sell those chairs? Several ways. Yeah, we've kicked around ideas yeah, yeah, of, yeah. of doing, you know, just kind of like a, a fundraiser thing that's sort of donating back to the chair fund to buy these current chairs. I suggest a donation or a minimum. Or There's I a, guess my thought was like, you know, I wonder if like you reached out to like the Solomon's guy or whatever. Well, that's, we have these. that's part of it. We have to declare them as surplus property first, mm -hmm. the select board does, before we sell them and we need a value. Well, that's why I was wondering, like, let's say you call us, hey, we're going we're gonna to sell all these chairs. He might say, I'll take, you know, six rows or whatever. Right. So, you know, we don't have to sell them yet, but, you know, line people up. Like yeah, that. Right. And value. then if there's some, you know, left over, Chair for You'll make more money for doing that. Purposes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. as kind of. I'll give you money, but I don't want any of those chairs. <laughs> <laughs> They're the worst chairs. Not sitting sitting on He's one. sitting on one to make a no, point. Oh, 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 they're so uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, well, uh, what did Greg see on? Uh, he saw some on eBay, right? Uh, oh, some of these. Yeah, a uh, two-seater one, I think, or a three-seater went for two fifty. Really. Uh, Wow. So there's potential oh. there. So this could actually be a money maker. That yeah. person likes discomfort. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, it's a piece of art. It's I know. Yes, it is. Somebody's going to make art out of them. Dan made yeah. Christmas trees out of the old loaf and ladle benches. And oh, oh, so sure. yeah. Yeah. I'll throw in some church piece. <laughs> 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 we have a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so I don't know what. You know, it's it kind of the whole thing is kind of the chicken and the egg with the old chairs and chairs. And Why don't you ask Chris McMahon that owns the salvage place on Off Front Street or Joe Camerata, both of them? 
Chris does a lot of things like that. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And then, you know, you know, if he's not interested, you know, this, he can direct you someplace. Right, yeah. And yeah. Like, oh, I know somebody that might be. I'm happy to call him. Yeah. If you'd like me to call him and ask him. Yeah, that would, I would give um, the public first dibs uh, so then we see how many are left. Um, Do you still need someone to get a value on them? Well, that's what I was going to call. Yeah. yeah, I'll call him and just okay. see what he says. What's his name again? Chris McMahon. No, is it Chris? No. McMahon. It doesn't sound right now. I'm saying it. It's my phone. The guy at the solitaire. That guy here. So I know, like, Pine Street Players, they're doing a theater production in May. So they're either spending $500 to rent chairs, or, you know, they, they even said, we'd rather give the town the $500 to get new toward new chairs than obviously renting chairs if we can get them in there. And then um, I met with Greg the other day about the Tuesday concerts, and we're definitely going to get town hall for the Tuesdays and Thursdays this year, even though it's super hot in there. Mm -hmm. So that if, because we had so many rained out, so that at least there is an option to still mm -hmm. do the concerts instead of just canceling them. So obviously yeah. it'd be great if we had chairs for those, so. Do you want to move quickly? No, we need the if we, to Yeah, the it's just, just, so you feel like the, the steps are estimate on value of the old, old chairs, mm -hmm. then establishing a sort of system of how they'll be sold or offered and then on that. And then we have yes. and a price on the new chairs. Okay. Which we had an estimate. It was like fifteen thousand I think. Yeah, yeah like fourteen. I would open 15, my notes 16. up on my internet. It's you know, kinda in a right right around there. Yeah. I know the aim would be to make money, but would there be any virtue in trying to recycle some of these chairs into current spaces that need chairs, yeah. like foundation art space? Yeah, I was wondering, that crossed my mind too. Yeah, well, I mean, I think all of the above, I mean, sell them. There's a lot of chairs. Good use. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's a You could use 30 or 40, that's kind of, you could use 30 or 40, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I already have a couple jammed fingers from <laughs> Well, I'll call him tomorrow and see if he could come take a look. Yeah, yeah, he could probably steer us in the right direction. Yeah. I can't imagine any, any salvage guy buying my call. <clears throat> I think you do chairs. some product. I don't know. The place in Southampton, too. You buy, like, big quantity stuff. Oh, the one Kensington. I mean, the one on 150. Kensington. Yeah. 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 I can ask yeah. them. But yeah, but yeah. yeah, start with him. I hope yeah. I'm but he would at least know all those guys know each other. Oh, yeah. yeah it's like they any do. business. Yeah. I wonder if uh, the Historical Society or the uh, American Independence Museum would be interested in this. Uh, not the Independence Museum because they're way out of period. They're too old. Or too new, I'm sorry. Yeah. Too new. Um, and the Historical Society definitely would want something donated to them. But they don't have any room for anything. You know, um, but it wouldn't be, uh, you know, it would be a couple maybe. Yeah. yeah. How many chairs are there? I mean, I don't know, 250 seats. Well, what's the capacity of 300? 300. And that's with aisles. And, and are they up in the balcony too? No, those are permanent. What, those, what's yeah. up there are mostly permanent. It's, I feel like if you read a good spiel and like take some nice pictures and make a little website, I think you'd paint a couple of them up. Everybody knows where those chairs came from. <laughs> I just yep. think people are, they like to have a piece of their dinner. They might you don't know? I don't. No. No. The Hampton Dump. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, are you serious? Yeah, the town of Hampton was... <laughs> who got it? Who got was, them? Uh, we, we, the town did somehow. I can't remember. We're, we're known for our dump pictures. <laughs> <laughs> it's very green. <laughs> no, 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 the, the, so the town of Hampton, like, I think they were, like, they were like the old they were their town hall. at their town hall, <laughs> their town hall. <laughs> they were like, yeah, they're all the same, always come back, they're well made, they're a lot of life, well the joke's gonna be on them when we sell them all, right, right. <laughs> 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 that'll be the, 
this doctor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Tell me again what you said about Swayze Park because we, we had it. We have it in here. I, I'm gonna let. Okay. In an official meeting here, I'm gonna let Julie tackle that one. Uh, that status is um, indeterminate okay. right now. Okay. I really don't know, that I'm sure. I don't know about the farmer's market. I think that we're closed off far enough back that that won't be able to still go on. But as far as opening it up for um, sort of public uses, I don't know. Okay, okay. And, and, and I think you meant, end, you meant the vote. The vote, okay. oh, okay. But that was yeah. my, my question, right. was good. Yeah. so you're answering my, so yeah, so no the, the project is going longer. So, okay. yeah, so. Um, that's the current project. Right. The, uh, that's a sewer site thing project. Thank you. Um, as far as the, the vote went uh, last week, um, the, the citizens' petition was approved. And so then the question was, which one outweighs the other? And our attorney, our town council, said that because um, we, we the, the attorney general uh, changed, uh, approved the change in the trust document uh, and the description that before the vote that that was set in place now. Um, but that was just a voice communication, so we're still waiting for an actual document. Okay. Did anything ever come up with the select board? I just saw a lot of stuff flying around that I had never heard that someone was claiming that per the verbiage of the ordinance because I spoke up that in the petition it was referencing the farmers market and community events like team events and I talked to Sean from the farmers market to say like hey have you talked to anybody about it and he was like no 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 I mm -hmm. you know they're throwing us in the mix here it, yeah. And, yeah and the, and then when I spoke to someone on the Swayze trustees their take was that because the ordinance only references emergency vehicles, that then no vehicles would have access. And I was like, well, there's a lot of places that aren't through roads that if someone has the area permitted, you can still drive a vehicle. So I, I just didn't know if that was something that ever actually came up in the discussion or it's just a matter of people interpreting things. Yeah, I'm not, I don't recall that coming up in the discussion. Okay. All right. And we, the sewer siphon project is undetermined when it will end? Yes, that's at this point of in time. The, the unknowns of underground yeah. tend to cause mm -hmm. some disruptions in timelines. Who's the best? Just like for us, for team, we've got a Arts Fest May 20th, and we, you know, we already have a B plan, which is fine. We can sort of use the front that's there that the farmers market will use, and then put music over the townhouse. But you know, we obviously want to make the decision: is it who's the the sort of municipality that really is the go-to? Select board. Select board. Okay, just to determine you know, if there's any chance it would be done. Okay. You look super optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> we have answers in the next two weeks. <laughs> Better answers, maybe not final answers. <laughs> and then the next, the last thing was the uh, Town Hall Gallery, uh, Parks and Rec, or Exeter Arts and Culture, like the overseer. Right. I don't know if that was the right word to use, but the overseer of the Town Hall Gallery was next on the agenda. So, Julie, the, with the, I, I'm still trying to get my verbiage down here that, um, that Tony gave to me. So, for the, the potential master plan for here, mm -hmm. which everybody's in favor of, but the discussion we had was just sort of on our end was sort of the funding that we now sort of help advise on the, the, um, the town hall revolving fund mm -hmm. was just the concern was that if all of that money goes to this master plan and then there's no you know sort of seed money left for things in the gallery or, or more hands-on art projects so we discussed ways of you know contributing to it but maybe figuring out ways to work with other people in town to get that 
funding. And so I finally, so that I understood the whole thing, just so everyone else gets it, there's actually three pieces, right? With Tony, there's the historic building conditions assessment, which would be one, and that would be 8,750. Then there's the future needs assessment, which would be 9,900. Then there's the BIM, which is sort of the architectural laser assessment of the yeah. building. That, would, that I'm not sold on that we need because okay. we currently don't have, the, in our planning and building department, I don't believe we have the capability of, or capacity to use that kind of model. We don't have that kind of infrastructure for a digital uh, model. Okay. Um, which is not to say we won't, but I don't know in that period between you know technology changes if, if that uh, 3D model and whatever we end up having are going to you know, be trans transferable. Okay. Um, so that's something to discuss probably at the, with planning a building, and I can do that. Um, but those are the, really the three parts, and then there's the the master planning part is the really where we're going to have the impact on what we want to do here. Um, where all the ideas came into it. And I think that that's not going to be done in a, in a separate shell. Right. And that's not going to be just the architecture firm saying, hey, here's, your need. here's your needs, because you folks have done that great survey, and, um, and there are outside entities that want to have some input, too, because of their uh, use. And then we also have how the um, town's uh, personalities at the Exeter TV and uh, storage and things like right, that. So right. mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of players or information gathering that's going to happen with that. Okay. And there will definitely be public meetings um, okay. in that process. The, the, but the first aspect of the historic building survey, I mean, unfortunately, we didn't get that grant. And, and uh, I still didn't, I, even though I went to speak to the uh, Preservation Alliance personally, I didn't, still, still don't understand why uh, that they thought it was a bigger project than what I wanted. So. Okay. Um, and, they, and then they recommended we go to LCHIP, which is the Land and Community Investment, Land and Community Heritage Investment Program, um, to for when we figure out what if a lot of changes need to happen to the building in the interior, um, that we can um, get a grant from them to pay for half. Okay. Um, we used it for the Winter Street Cemetery the repairs and uh, Rains Farm Barn sills and repairs there. Um, and we have another one outstanding. We can't find a contractor to finish work on the Rains Farm Barn, but we have, a, have the award. From them. So we've been very successful in a highly competitive uh, grant system. Okay. So that's a, that's a, you know, once we know what we want to do and we start kind of pricing it out, then we'll know if we have a warrant article, or I'm sure whatever we do is going to involve a warrant article at some point. Okay. Um, but there's still opportunities. And, and the National Register thing that I wanted to do, uh, that Tony may have talked to you about, um, apparently I can do it without this historic building survey. Uh, and what that does is also open us up to more federal funds. Okay. Uh, there aren't uh, a whole lot of options for uh, arts grants uh, in the capacity that we may want to have. Uh, but as far as <coughs> preservation, there's very small ones too. But the, uh, having it on the National Register will open up opportunities for federal funding. Okay. Um, so real quick, so with some of the discussion, our thought was <clears throat> we've been working toward getting this, the gallery back to sort of being the art gallery, where in that transitional phase, you know, it's just kind of a space that's here and anyone can sort of get at any time. Yeah. But we have a lot of interest. We now have um, SAA downstairs is going to do a couple shows a year. Um, the art department actually at PEA, Tara and uh, Carla, they're interested in doing an annual show with students and um, faculty. So it, it's getting to the point where it, it seems like we can get a show in here every month so it's always being used and even kind of established some regular hours. So what we talked about doing was sort we still have there's still the account that was there from the arts committee that had the money from there yeah. so what we'd like to do is as the town hall revolving fund 
the momentum seems to be going more in a direction of that. That's going to be bigger picture, the building, the surveys, and all that. And if we have a system where, you know, the special event is already in place that it's a two hundred dollar thing, so people that do a show here are paying two hundred dollars. Right. So what we would like to do is to to get it back to where that you know small amount of money that's coming in to sort of revisit the previous structure, the account is still there, so that there's a little bit of seed money for here, for the fees coming into the art show, to be able to deal with with lights and fixing panels and that kind of thing, and sort of establish this really at, as, you know, the Town of Exeter Art Gallery, as opposed to just being just a space that's no different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the rec room and, and there's still fees, but it'll be more sustainable. And I th um, that's and remind me, so this committee has our commission has its own account that you get you put fees for events. So, so this is what happened. So there's there's the, the the bank account that was here from the arts committee previously, that it's its own account. That that doesn't exist. Got, got, no, it does. It no, does. but the arts committee does. Right, right, right. right. That's not so, really so, so we now oversee that account. There was like $1,600 in it. We spent, I think, like half of that on new lighting and a bunch of stuff for in here. So that we have, we oversee. Okay. But then that town hall revolving fund where all of the fees for the building go into it and then 5000 from the foreign articles from the last years has gone in there. So, which we, we just sort of advise on that, but that's you guys, the select board. So we're just thinking this is getting used, everything else in the building seems to be in limbo, and now with not being able to use the balcony downstairs and no backstage and no green room, they clearly the priority is on bigger picture master plans moving forward, but at least this is getting used. Right. So if we can just get the the two hundred dollars a month coming in for the art shows in that account that exists for upkeep of this. I don't think we'll need any additional funding. It's it's more yeah. It know, was all fix here and fix there. It, yeah, and it was all very like whatever we took in pretty much immediately went back into like like for example like the carpets coming down. How would we repair that? Like it was pretty much always being just put back in. Um, because at the moment we were on the Exit Arts Committee, like we did, people paid to get their shows. You know, like they, um, it was the application fee versus the right, renting. Right, right. So. Um, yeah, it was it was donations, mm -hmm. application fees. I think that was, that was pretty it. much what mm -hmm. feed the account. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what you're looking for is a separation that just when somebody's using this space here that it goes into the Arts Commission's uh, account as opposed to the Town Hall Revolving Fund. Yeah, and, and that we even, and I did meet with Greg about this the other day, that we even come up with, and it also takes something off of Parks and Rec's plate as far as the whole special event thing, where we can come up with a designated sort of application that's a four monthly art show that has all the rules and regs and has, you know, all the fire code stuff and so that, you know, nothing's moved, it's not a blank canvas space, here's the art gallery for an art show and obviously people can do opening events and all that kind of stuff, but just to sort of simplify and streamline it as opposed to it just being another space that someone can grab for a day here or a day there to do whatever and then they're going to want to move all this stuff around and then it's going to break. And <laughs> we'll have to look at the article, the warrant article that started the town hall uh, revolving fund. Okay. Um, because I think that was generic and just said any income. Right. Um, from the building. From the right. the building, right. yeah. So, uh, yeah, that might be a question for um, maybe even town council about whether we can separate. Differentiate, also. okay. Okay. Greg and I can look into the... Okay. We jump to Walter and go from there. We already have. Um, we 
sure to working on an application already, one that would be more specific to the art gallery, um, kind of based on what the Exeter Arts Committee used to use, mm -hmm. but it was a little, we were making it a little more current, um, especially with like being specific to a time frame. So if you're going to rent it, then you would have it open for this many days and you would make sure that you reach out to, you know, like who you reach out to, the numbers and what nights you'd have the show open and things like that were a little more clear. Mm -hmm based on how an art gallery would run. So that's yeah. sort of where, we, we haven't touched it in a while, it was sort of like on the back burner, but I could share that with you. I yeah. hope that would be helpful in any way, but yeah. just to kind of make it, because it looks different than what you all use for this. And space. just our generic special event. Yeah, because as of right and now. And I mess that up all the yeah. time, sorry. As, <laughs> as of right now, everybody has to like, draw out a diagram of what they're gonna do and yeah. how they're gonna be set up. And so it's, if it's an art gallery and it is what it is, then that can be part of the application. And like, here's the layout of the gallery. This is what you're gonna use. And, and it's just more streamlined. Okay. The no attachments to the walls thing. Yeah, right. Right. yep, right. yep. Yeah. And we did get more of those from the town offices. So we actually have more room ah. for having our, without the walls. I will send you the application. I'm just like in draft mode, so it doesn't look awesome yet. But and, you know, any input, like I mean, I could do. I could attach it, and you, you all could review it also. And then that way, if there's any questions or anything, like, hey, make this easier or whatever, we can. I can do some edits to it so it's more user friendly. Even before, I, if it ever becomes official, then we. Have sort of those things so change. Yeah, and, and be sure to attach the link to the Tulip uh, one day or however many days short term insurance. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Do, yeah, that's the one. The Tulip one that's on the website is really just for a one day event, right? To my understanding, yeah. I haven't. I haven't run across someone looking for insurance for like multiple days. Nancy and Greg really. Nancy primarily handles most of the, the rentals. Well, I think so, I tried to, because you want to add the town on as a, um, onto your insurance. As a writer. Yeah. yeah. And I think I tried to do it a long time ago. <laughs> and maybe it's the quality of my insurer, but, uh, but she just scratched her head and said, what? <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, we have to be sure. Uh, I think, clear, sure. right? I think it's super exciting that we have enough interest that this could be an art gallery 12 months out of the year. I think that's yeah. awesome for Exeter yeah. and for our purposes as a arts. The, um, and the other thing you need to consider, too, is we, I think you already mentioned the hours of operation yeah. that they become a regular thing. Is that, I mean, that's, yeah. that's what we want to make it part goal. of the application. Like, you know, because $200 is dirt cheap to get this space for a month, but we want to say to groups like exactly. you guys gotta figure out a way even if it's yeah. Fridays four to eight, Saturdays twelve to four, Sundays twelve or something like that, like we used to do with the arts mm -hmm. just so then we can promote that it's here, it's open, no matter what the show is. So Yeah, consistency is kinda of what I think is gonna help. But nothing really up here in July, August for sure. Too hot. It is too hot. It's pretty crazy. Part of August is hard. Till we get the HVAC system. What? I'm just looking at the architecture. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm, I think that's it. Does anyone else have anything they want to add? I will add that the beginnings of the town hall uh, master planning committee is starting April 3rd. There's going to be a meeting of us, us the we organizers, so uh, Tony and Jeff Beck, the town um, maintenance supervisor, myself, and Russ, I believe. There might have been another one, but at least the, um, the beginnings. Or maybe Greg. Cool. Yeah, Greg's going. And, and the, at least my oh, idea. Oh, the town, the town, yeah. Town hall, yeah. 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 Um, at least my idea, and that's what we're going to be discussing at that meeting, was to have, uh, we need input from all the interested groups, you know, mm -hmm. the, um, Energy committee wants to wants to figure out the best you know heating and cooling system and you know we need sound and light for downstairs and we need to figure out the, the Department of Labor's aspect which is a little frustrating. Um, 
so there are a lot of uh, different groups facilities to look at it. So I've already lined up people that are willing to be part of it uh, from each of those committees. I happen to sit on all the committees that have, have a piece of, of skin in the game. But, um, so we're starting. Uh, that, that's our next step is just yeah, to good. start it up and then get, get the assessment and the, um, the planning of it. All so, right. Sounds good. Um, yeah, and I appreciate that you guys um, you know, stepped up to get those quotes that you did. That was, uh, was very handy. Tony and I um, sat in that meeting, uh, was it last week? Was it, uh, yeah, with Seacoast Eat Local, who's managing the farmer's market, trying to get an idea with the siphon project and how their status down there is gonna be looking. Um, but one of the things they did bring up, um, with it historically being on uh, Swayze, they'd really like it to stay in there. And I think you had mentioned it earlier tonight, like I think there's enough space towards the back that they could probably, so whatever ends up happening, if it's towards the front or towards the back, they did bring up um, maybe having like some sort of like a rotating like art display or like something a little extra just to kind of entice people to come down there too, making it more of like an event. Like this month we're gonna be doing whatever it is and or if it's like week to week. So um but Tony was there and uh I said I'd I'd mention it to the group here too about that. Um Yep, so I've definitely talked to those guys about okay. helping them with music and helping to music, yeah. promote that music is there and Tony mentioned to me the idea of, which I thought was a really cool idea, of potentially having, you know, for special occasions, having like Exeter chefs down in the park, using yeah. the ingredients from the from the farmer's market, and yep. maybe have an XTV film them. Maybe tying in the community fridge. Yes, there you go. Oh, hey. Yeah. It's even yeah. better, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, the cooking demos, um, I think they mentioned Portsmouth, I think, has a booth that's dedicated for like town departments too. So like rotating in different departments. Or committees. Or committees, <laughs> yep, yep. Um, I think their town manager goes down there occasionally just to meet with people too, so. Um, yeah, really exciting. Yeah, cool. Adjourn. Not yet, though. We have to, we have to, can't, I can't ever remember. Motion Thank you. Adjourn. Someone needs to move to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Okay. Anyone second? Second. All in favor? Aye. I'll, I'll remember someday. You need a gamble? <laughs> <laughs> I'll come right down. The cut. Oh, yeah. Actually, it may. Thank you for tuning in to Exeter TV. Exeter TV is the town's public and government access channels, available on Comcast channels 98 and 22. Channel 98 is your channel. If you have an idea for a program, want to host your own talk show, or submit a film, we're here to get your content on television. On channel 22, we bring you live and replay coverage of government meetings and other town updates. A third channel, Blue Hawk Media, is operated by SAU 16 and can be found on channel 13 with all your school sports, events, and meetings. You can watch Exeter TV online at exeternh.tv, Apple TV, and on Roku. Find us on social media for extra content. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell to get notified about live streams and new content. Tune in to our platforms every other Friday to watch the Exeter Bi-Weekly Report with recaps of recent events, updates from town departments, and messages from nonprofits in your area. If you head to our website, exeternh.tv, we invite you to sign up to our newsletter to receive monthly updates about new content, upcoming meetings, and more. We'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch Exeter TV and hope that you tune in to our other content.